This is General How To. Today's How To video is going to be talking about shower diverter faucets. After watching a few YouTube videos, I decided to make my own YouTube video because some of them were just telling you to fix it, but not really having to replace it. And then others were replacing it, but not really teaching you how to fix it. So hopefully I'm going to clear some things up for you guys. Go over when you should fix it or when you should just call it quits and replace it. Okay, so there's two styles of shower faucet diverters. Why do you call it a diverter? Because when you turn the water pressure on, you need to tell the shower when to shoot it out of here for the tub or when it should come out of the shower head. So it's a diverter valve. Pulling it up prevents the water from coming out here, so it goes up the pipe and comes out the shower head, which we just saw. Pushing the water down, opens the valve and starts to come out from here to fill your bath. So essentially all these do the same thing. However, there's two styles. There's a slip on or there's a screw on. So how do you know which one you have? So before you make your way to your local parts store, you need to figure out which style you have. You're gonna look underneath here, with the bright light, and you're gonna see if there's any Allen keys, any type of anything, any locking screw that would lock this on. I don't see any. I see a manufacturer's tag here, but I don't see any locking keys. No Phillips, no flathead, no Allen keys, nothing. So that tells me that this is going to not be a slip on. And I'll show you what we do for this. If it was, if there was an Allen key or a screw, you're gonna need to loosen it all the way and you're gonna slide it right off. Okay, so we determined what style this is. We know it's a screw on, but before we start working on anything, you wanna make sure that that drain is closed. Get yourself anything to stop anything from going down below. You don't want a O-ring or a screw, the set screw. Had this been a slip on, there would be a little set screw like we talked about. God forbid it falls right down below. So close this up before we do anything. Okay, so we're ready to remove it. We determined again, there's nothing underneath, so we know it's gonna turn. If there's any silicone or any caulking here, you're gonna wanna take a very sharp razor blade, very carefully score the edge, because some people like to use silicone on here, and that would hold it on. So make sure you take a razor blade, a flathead screwdriver, anything, but just be careful so you don't slip and score the nice chrome finish. So am I gonna righty-tighty? No, I'm gonna go lefty-loosey. a little bit of water leaking out it now would be a good time to get a sock and stuff something in there so it doesn't leak down into the wall okay so i went to my local parts store my hardware store remember this is the style we needed when i did remove this this copper pipe removed from the back of the wall it may sometimes remove from in here as you could see let me try to get that on video See it in there? So it will maybe be a challenge to get this pipe out. If you can't, or if you damage the threadings, Home Depot does sell something really convenient. And that's this right here. Essentially what this is, it was only, it was under a dollar, is that's gonna slide into here, had this broke, and it's gonna act as its own pipe. So ideally, we're gonna to wanna to get this pipe out here without damaging the soldered threading down below. If we can't, like we said, we have a backup plan. If this is not the right size, we know it's the right size, but if it's not the right length, you just take a hacksaw and you just cut it. It's really, really convenient, very nice, so you don't have to start soldering copper pipe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to try to get this off right here safely. Now, I did wanna explain something. So this is a copper pipe in here, and this is soldered. So ideally, I'm gonna try first to hold one hand on here, put my little wrench on the fitting right here. Okay, that way I have something to grab onto. 
I'm gonna try to release it. I'm gonna try to get this loose. If you feel it's too, too tight, back off and stop, and I'll show you another option. Ideally, you wanna start with this. If you feel that you're turning it so hard that something's gonna break, the solder could potentially give you an issue and break free, break loose. You don't want that. So I'm gonna try. If I feel I'm giving it too much pressure, stop, and I'll show you another option. Excuse the Dunkin' Donuts cup. It's the only way I could have the camera being held. So remember, wrench, adjustable wrench on the fitting, and I'm gonna try to break it loose. So I'm gonna stop because I'm putting too much pressure that I know instead of it coming loose from inside, it's just gonna break this joint. So what else can we do? I'll show you. Okay, so ideally I would love to find a pipe wrench that I could fit right here because I do have very limited clearance. Whatever pipe wrench I have can only, the jaws can only be this big because it would hit here and it wouldn't work. Unfortunately, I did bring all my tools but I don't have a pipe wrench that small. Mine are too big. And I'm guessing as you're a homeowner and trying to do this repair yourself, you're probably not gonna have a pipe wrench either that size. So if you could find a wrench like this, try to find the jaws in the V shape because that's good for gripping to pipe, not the jaws that are like this, okay? So if you do have that, what you can try doing is gripping not from here, not from here, but from the pipe side. That's gonna help you not damage here. However, depending on how tight it is, it could still break down here below. You can spray WD-40 down here and let it sit for a little while, but from all the corrosion, judging by this, I'm probably gonna wanna replace it anyway even if I did have a rebuild kit because of the appearance, but I just wanted to show you all the options possible. So I'm gonna put my phone down and I'm gonna try my best to grip here and pull as hard as I can. It'd help if you have two people. If you do, have someone hold right here and you could use your vice grip or whatever you have, your adjustable wrench, whatever you got. But unfortunately, off video, I tried everything. I had somebody else holding it, put two hands and it's, 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 it's stuck. So now what? Okay, so we picked this up. Remember, we made sure we got the right one, not the slip on, but this is called the tub spout threaded connection. You can see it's half inch. This is for the threaded kind, which is what we're using. It's not the slip on. So we're going to open this up and I'm going to show you how to put this. Okay. I did want to mention, if you are going to cut this to size, obviously you wouldn't want to cut on this end because you have the fitting here to use a tool to tighten it. So you're going to want to make the cuts on this side. Okay. Use a hacksaw and just follow the threading. Don't cut on an angle, cut nice and straight. But first I'm gonna install this just to see if I even need to cut in the first place. Okay, so let's test fit it. Had this been a slip on, this would have been a lot easier because we could have just loosened the set screw on the bottom, slipped it right off and our pipe would have been right here. However, this is a twist on style. So let's test fit it. Let's get this on here into here. Don't screw it on too tight. We're just doing it just to see if we need to cut any. Go nice and slow. If you feel too much resistance, turn it left until it clicks onto the threadings and then continue right. I'm just gonna go enough so it's a little snug. Now I'm gonna take this and let's see. I'm gonna slide it on and we're just gonna see if we need to cut anything. See how it's on an angle? That doesn't look right, so I'm gonna turn it left See if it clicks. It's hard with one hand. There we go, it clicked. Okay. Oy, oy, oy. All right, I'm gonna 
turn the camera off just so I use two hands as I don't want to make a mistake. And I'm going to screw it on and see if there's a big gap here. If there's a big gap, that means we're going to need to cut a little bit of the pipe. Okay, so I got the piece cut to size. Notice I'm going, I cut on the end that doesn't have this to put a pipe or a wrench or anything on it. So I'm gonna thread this into here and I'm gonna show you what to do next. So put it right in. And now I highly suggest putting Teflon tape on here first before you thread it on because it just makes it a little difficult when it's in a weird spot. So probably would wanna put Teflon on right now. Okay, I'm gonna snug it up. Again, it's plastic, so don't go super tight. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna test it before we put the spout on. We're gonna start the shower. Obviously, water is gonna come rushing out, but what you wanna see is take a bright light, shine it through the hole, and just make sure no water is coming out from where the thread meets inside. There you go. I'm letting it run for about a minute. I don't see a single drip, so now I'm confident to put this picket on. All right, so that's it. You can see um, I cut off maybe an eighth of an inch. I highly suggest when you go to your hardware store, Lowe's or Home Depot, definitely pick up two or three of those pipes. If you have the threaded on kind like we do, if you have the slip on, you don't have to worry about anything. So pick up two or three, they're only 50 cents, just in case you cut it too big, um, or sorry, too small, you're done. So. <laughs> Pick up a couple and that's it. Uh, obviously, like we said, test it out and uh, that's it. We're ready to go. So I hope this video helps you guys. If it did, comment down below and definitely subscribe. So when you're in the store looking for your replacement, remember if you're trying to get the part to fix it, you can see the diverter, but unfortunately they don't have Kohler products here. So just make sure you get the right one. Some are slip-ons and some thread on like I have at our house. So just make sure you could kind of read it on here and see which type you have okay just make sure before you leave so here was the old piece um i couldn't get this off safely it was going to break so that's when we go to your local hardware store lowe's or home depot and we picked up these definitely like i said pick up a couple if for some reason you have a custom shower head where you really want this because it matches with your shower head or your handle which this one didn't uh, both are Kohler, but it doesn't really match it that well, so it didn't really matter. However, you would just contact the manufacturer and just get a custom ordered part because Lowe's and Home Depot did not carry a Kohler rep replacement diverter uh, seal kit, I guess you would call it. They only had their Delta and some other brands. So, all right. Thank you again.